Hello everyone, it's Maxine. It's a beautiful day in Victoria. Um, nice and sunny. Well, it is kind of a chilly week. It's not, I don't know, it's probably around five, six degrees right now and then it get, drops down to about one or so in the evening. <laughs> I guess um, I didn't have so much of a plan today with my um, oh I didn't have a plan so much today with my video I just, just came here and I thought I'll just think of something once I get here I thought maybe I should make something autism related since my last video did a lot better than my usual but um and thank you for that thanks for watching i appreciate it um but since i'm in a beautiful location that's like full of nature and stuff i kind of got inspired to make a video that's about things i do now um, to take better care of my health both mentally and physically and things I still want to improve on and work on this year. It's never too late to make um, New Year's resolutions. <laughs> so, and there's so many things I, um, there's probably much more to this that I do and want to do that I haven't thought of, but I think there's enough here for now. <laughs> um, for starters, I'm about like, seven eight days into my um eliminating my food sensitivities and i feel like really good physically um, a lot of my pain symptoms have gone away um but um like a lot of my food sensitivity signs has gone but um one thing is i haven't been working as much lately and i've also i have been taking the dogs for quite a lot lot of walks but I haven't been as active and my and nothing I haven't been pushing myself physically and I haven't been like working out with weights or anything so my pain levels might be really good because of eliminating my food sensitivities but it could also be because I'm not pushing myself physically very much which I mean with uh, with having fibromyalgia you have to just do what you can and it's not necessarily a bad thing to not push yourself to not be in having chronic pain. But that is one thing I'm really happy that has been pretty good lately and under control, especially with, um, you know, not overindulging in sugar and stuff. Like, I'm still getting a lot more carbs than all my past diets, but it's like fruit and natural. So um, for now, I'm not intending to go back to keto or low carb or anything i'm just going to stick to all my food sensitivities taking that out and sticking with what i can have and then if i find that you know the scale's not budging as much then perhaps i'll reevaluate. but part of the thing too is uh not wanting to drastically lose weight like i did in the past like it would be so restrictive like i would you know have that 10 pound drop of water weight and then um continue on being so restrictive and that led to sort of the patterns of eating disorder behavior such as anorexia bulimia and um binge eating so i'm just doing my best to uh, so far so good <laughs> to not get back into those habits and stuff with my hair I'm just like leaving it natural lately and it's like did you know that our hair only goes in like one pattern around our heads it's not like that's why one side flips in and one side flips out <laughs> anyway um so next is uh this might be too TMI for some people but for the females of the world who would appreciate to hear this um something I haven't done for about maybe two to three years now is I stopped using well probably even longer than that I stopped using tampons and then I switched to the diva cup which I felt like it did make a huge difference in 
the pain levels of getting the menstrual cycle and but then what I've and thankfully with my periods they've always been pretty regular and they um usually just the first day could sometimes be extremely painful like so painful that it's like it's like no matter what position you're in you're uncomfortable and so in the past I used to take pain medication just like once that first day because I tend to not like taking anything not when I have colds or anything I'm pretty medication free which is something I pride myself on and um but then when I switch to pads only in the past like year or so it's like taken it to the next level like now I almost experience no pain and I mean like it seems like common sense like when you're putting like bleached cotton with possible chemicals inside of you for like a week on end like it probably is causing health conditions in women that we don't exactly realize and um and you know including the diva cup like even though it's may seem better it's still like putting silicone even if it's like medical grade silicone so um obviously there's times that call for both like tampons and diva cup that you just can't always have a pad but <laughs> that's just something i'm doing and something i wanted to comment on because i wanted to um try to help other women with that So oh, next is, um, I've just been doing my makeup a lot less and not doing my hair as much either. So like aerosols, like trying to eliminate chemicals as much as I can. I've even gone to work, like even though I have really bad rosacea, I have like no eyebrows, I have like skin issues, I look like <laughs> horrible without makeup. I've just been trying to find my inner strength and confidence and not care so much and try to let my skin breathe and heal but I've gone ages without wearing makeup like I used to I used to like practically never leave the house I used to like go in the pool with makeup I used to starting at a really young age I was wearing makeup which I'm sure just did like permanent cheap makeup that did probably permanent damage to my skin as well but I've just been trying my best to do that less. Um, I think like we all, whoa, where's that guy going? Oh, <laughs> there's a ramp right there. This boat, it looked like it was heading towards the rocks and I thought, ha, he better slow down, but there's the ramp. <laughs> anyway, um, with my bad habits so because I don't drink I don't smoke I don't do drugs I don't gamble anymore um eliminating my food sensitivities ending my eating disorders like I feel just like in a really good place um the only thing um I know like that really takes a lot of strength but it takes time and it takes, um, you know, it can sometimes take being a little bit isolated to be able to do these things a lot easier because you don't have in outside influences. But um, I'm just trying to think long term now. And like I've said in other videos, just um, taking out as many bad habits as I possibly can taking away dependencies because I just think a lot of us are so dependent I'd even like to quit coffee if I can it'd be nice to not have a migraine or a headache if you miss one day without caffeine so that's 
one of my next goals, but I'm really proud of myself for that because considering my circumstances growing up, like considering the things I've been through and then getting diagnosed late in life, um, I'm just proud that I'm not participating in those things. And it's not like saying, oh, I'm so much better than others. And it's like, um, it's not, it's nothing like that. Like there's no shame if... For a long time, I could just drink socially and not get an excess. It's just that there was a job that I had this past year and I noticed it, the stress of it or the isolation of it or something of it was making me start to drink more often. Like, and then I thought, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> so I'm just like, I nipped it in the butt right away and I haven't had a single drink since New Year's. So... This is like the longest I've probably not had a single drop of alcohol since, <laughs> well, I started drinking before I turned 18. So like, even though I could have like one drink, one, two drinks a month in the past like year or so, I just think that this is probably the longest I've gone with it. Well, it has to be because it's already March now. So January to February, February to March. So two whole months. That's pretty awesome. And um, I just picked a busy location. People are enjoying the scenery and then they have to listen to me talking. So that's why I'm kind of whispering. Um, with the bad addictions, it's like getting myself out of bad habits in terms of ending kind of like toxic relationships and and making sure just to be cautious and entering new relationships like if just things don't feel right or but I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit because I definitely need to get back out there I have been to myself too long the past quite a few years now just like after the pandemic and then, um, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. So another thing I've done is I didn't know that, I mean, maybe I thought about it a bit. Like I do have some OCDs that sometimes turn into like a bit of a fear of things, like such as things I've already mentioned, like whether it be chemicals and whatnot, but I switched over my bed sheets to cotton and white so that there's no dyes in it. And I think just because, you know, when you're sleeping and you sweat and stuff, and there was a time where I didn't have time to use brand new um, towels, like red towels. I just went straight to using them before washing them. And the red dye just got all over my skin. And ever since then, it kind of creeped me out and made me realize that, well, you know, our skin is the biggest organ in our body. So what we put on it, we absorb. So that's kind of where my mind's gone. And I, I like love wearing black and that'll probably never change. I'm not going to switch over my entire wardrobe to white clothes. <laughs> that would be tragic. But... Switching over my bed sheets is something that I've done um, for the probably at least 10 years or more. I've worn only deodorant, not antiperspirant, because when you're when you have antiperspirant, you're not allowing your body to release the toxins built up inside. So that's something I've done for a long time. Just recently, I accidentally bought a antiperspirant. So when I put it on, I put like just the, I just kind of, instead of like caking it on, I just kind of pat my armpit because I'm like really, I'm not going to throw it away, but I'm not going to continue on with that. That's the first time I've bought antiperspirant in like a really long time. Um, footwear, I kind of made like a little video of that recently that before I used to be I had like a girly aesthetic and I would, even when I was a server, I was wearing like flats, which, which is so silly. It's like you're, 
you know those like runners where there are people outside running and they do it barefoot? Well, it's one thing to run barefoot on the ground where it's like easier on your joints and body, but when you're running or walking all day on concrete and that, that's really hard on the body and that's not natural. Like what running on grass and stuff, that's normal, but like on concrete so wearing flats all day was like really bad for my fibromyalgia before before I even got the diagnosis but um so one thing I do now is I wear runners a lot and it just completely has not healed my disabilities but it's um just improved tremendously and I just want more girls to be aware of that because I think guys are the ones that wear runners mostly but we should be considering that as well and it just sucks because the nice sh like the support of the Dr. Schulz and all that stuff like it's not very cute it's not sexy <laughs> with some outfits so even with insoles and stuff, sometimes that's not enough. It's like the whole, it's the whole, like, shape and everything of the shoe that makes it good and having so much support underneath. And blue light glasses, I got rid of mine or they broke or something, but that's something I want to get back because we spend so much time on our phones that, like, there were times... The outsides of my eyes were like red because, okay, when I had my home daycare, I'd have to communicate with the families a lot. I'd have to advertise and communicate with people. And then when the kids were napping, I was on my phone so much that my eyes were like red on the outside. Like it looked really bad. And I thought, oh my God, is this like eye cancer or something? But now I'm noticing that everyone, like actors and influencers and celebrities, like everyone's eyes on the outside, because we're just spending way too much time on our phones that like than never before, ever before. <laughs> so we need to be doing, we need to be being more proactive and taking care of our vision. So whether it be spending less time on our phones or just you know, getting those blue light glasses. I think they're like really helpful and necessary because I remember when it was at its worst, I got the blue light glasses and it almost felt like instant relief. Like my eyes stopped being itchy and dry. And I think there was a time where me and my mom drove to Victoria for Manitoba before we decided to move here. And in that week of just driving all the way here and then driving back, um, my eyes had just completely cleared up and they were whiter and brighter than I had seen them in years. And it really got me thinking like, oh my God, we're spending way too much time on our phones as a society. Not just me, but everyone. And next is, I'm probably never going to dye my hair again. And again, these are just things I'm doing. It's not shade and it's not telling anyone what to do. But I've had every color under the sun and now I'm just embracing what I have. And I think that eventually, like I used to hate the color of my natural hair. But I think that once it gets longer and the sun kind of gives it more dimension and like... um highlights and lowlights it'll look nice again but I was just thinking that that could be one of the reasons as well that I had brain lesions in my scans it wasn't just from secondhand smoke that the neurologist thought but I was dyeing my hair at a really young age so when you're doing that I'm sure the chemicals just absorbing into your skull <laughs> maybe not maybe not quite that deep but the fumes and all that like all that plays a huge factor in our health <laughs> all of a sudden all these companies like tampons and antiperspirant and all the things i've mentioned they're gonna come and end my life <laughs> that's horrible i don't actually believe that i'm not like that paranoid but
um i just think it's like important to share this stuff like for everyone just to consider and next is natural toothpaste so for quite a long time i've bought in like organic and people might say oh it's all shit but the thing is um Even if it's like, okay, say it's a bit more expensive and say it is all garbage and it doesn't matter if you buy regular or organic, it's, it's, it's like manifesting and it's like, it's like believing it's kind of like a placebo, right? So if I think, oh, this is better than the other crap out there, then I'm sure it is helping me in a way, because if I start using all the things I'm fearful of, then that would bring on more stress that's neat than needed so that's how I'm looking at a lot of things lately because I'm like oh I wasn't buying strawberries and blueberries for so long because they were so expensive but then I'm like yeah but I go spend a single meal sometimes up to $15 at like a restaurant and that's for a single use so when you buy fruit and things like that it lasts several you know time so I'm starting to try to switch my brain in that way of thinking as well but that doesn't mean that the um the food chains out there should be like skyrocketing their prices I think it's like getting really ridiculous out there for people and I'm very sorry to the people out there with families and they have to decide between uh, necessities but um cruelty free so that's something not as much vegan but I try my best to buy vegan and cruelty free but cru cruelty free for sure so shampoos and hand soap and toothpaste and just anything possible because there's still companies out there testing on animals and that's just wrong I mean I know people can t try to justify it one way or another but I think by now we know what chemicals are harmful and what isn't as so is it completely necessary to it's just really oh, horrific the things that we do just for um the almighty dollar next is i've gone back to pescatarian so i was vegetarian pescatarian vegan kind of like mostly pescatarian in this time but from age 15 to about 30 and then around 30 31 I ate meat for several years on and off and then up I think I went a year again back to pescatarian and I ate meat again but now I'm about probably two months in again to not eating meat including chicken when I, when I lost a lot of weight and I did keto, I was having like extreme meat cravings. <laughs> so that's kind of one of the reasons. I just thought, okay, maybe I should try it. Maybe it would help me feel better or whatever, like red meat and, and, but I have a lot of regrets about that. I kind of wish I hadn't ever. It would have been really cool to go from age 15 to like the end of my life, never eating meat again. But, um, next, no pop, so included in all the things, not even, like, those sparkling water beverage, like, the more natural stuff, it's, like, it's still some sort of unnatural thing, like, I don't, I just don't need it, I mean, if I really felt like, okay, well, I'm not drinking, not smoking, not doing drugs, not having this, not having that, not having junk food anymore not eating no not having fast food then maybe I would resort to that as being like my treat but I just don't feel like I need it right now um things I want to do now so starting on the next topic so things I'd like to do this year um I want to get active on my bumble again I'm bumble bff and dating because I've had really good experiences with Bumble BFF actually. Um, 
the first time I made three friends in Winnipeg the first time I activated it the first chick I met we ended up going on a trip to New York together which is pretty cool and the other one was like kind of um, a mom who really wanted nights out and I at the time was still in the phase where I found enjoyment in going out and dancing it was like a release of energy and you know a way to just have fun and I still like that music and it still like feels really good to go do that I even wish I could at this age sometimes but I'm 35 years old and I can only imagine the looks I'd get <laughs> but I might we'll see <laughs> and then the third one was kind of like I hadn't had a lot of like plus size friends in my life so it was cool to meet someone who was kind of like me and had a, shared a lot of my experiences in life from childhood to uh, her age and some of those relationships didn't last because I just kind of became like really selective and it's like if people's morals didn't exactly align with mine I just found it really hard to maintain the relationship that's kind of one of my like autistic things or just me as a person but like, if you're a supporter of Donald Trump or something like that, like, please get lost. <laughs> Sorry if I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to, um, upset probably a percentage of my audience right now, but <laughs> anyway. And then with dating, that's one thing I just, um, I've always like waited, waited, waited. I'm like, I'm going to wait till I'm at this goal weight or I'm, I have this much money in the bank or whatever the circumstances are. And it's like, I'm, I should just get back out there. Like why wait? Life is short and I deserve to like be happy and find happiness and experiment and I think I'm like in a very good place in my life where I could go on dates and be before I'd get probably like pretty hurt if I was like rejected but now it's come kind of, I'm kind of at a place where I'm like I'd be completely at peace with whatever because I only want to be with people who like really want to be with me and I don't want to be with people who just use me for sex and whatever um I need to kayak more oh I can't wait the weather's warming up I have a kayak and I just can't wait to get out there but I'm a little fearful too because I've shared this story before but I've I went out a little bit too far not like straight into the depth of it but like around the coast I kind of went out a bit further than I intended and on the first thing I saw was a giant sea lion come out of the water. I didn't even know we had those kinds. Like I thought we only had like seals, like the black kind of more like a dog looking one. But we have those gigantic hundreds and hundreds of pounds sea lions. So when I saw that at a distance, I'm like out in the sea Googling, how much does a sea lion weigh? Because <laughs> I just thought, oh my God, what if it jumps on my kayak? So then I turned around and I was heading back and it was so neat because it was like kind of, it was far away, but it was like keeping a distance with me and slowly floating along. It seemed like it was kind of curious about me. And then all of a sudden I saw two whale watching boats and they had their engines off. And then I saw two dorsal fins come out of the water and they were just gigantic. And it was a really cool experience, but I thought... I think I kind of scared myself a little too because every time I'd go out there it was like you could see straight down until you get to a certain depth and then you can't really see anymore but so my imagination started running wild <laughs> but that's something I'd like to do and maybe I'll make other friends who like to kayak and that's something we'll do and I'd like to start, I know this is like very granola, like almond mom without the kids, but I want to start creating like my own shampoos and conditioners and soaps and, or um, cleaners and things like that. Like you can make simple products just by using like orange peels and vinegar and 
stuff like that. So that's what I really want to get into. Not only just to eliminate chemicals, but to save money. Mm. I want to do more sightseeing in Victoria when I can, like experiencing different must-sees in Victoria that I haven't done yet, whether it be for financial reasons or just haven't made the time or haven't looked into things. I've been living here going on two years this summer and although I have seen so many beautiful things and gone and had so many amazing experiences there's still just so much more to see so that's something I want to do. Next is uh I'd like to make neurodivergent friends and I'd love to make a pop podcast where I can like interview other neurodivergent whether it be like early diagnosis or late diagnosis I'd love to meet more people like me and or like us and interview and see what their experience has been like because I think that could just be really helpful for others and for myself I need to finish my trailer I started painting and kind of renovating and ripped out the built-in table and seats and all that stuff in my trailer but I want to finish I only have like one coat of paint on certain areas and I've just lived like that for a long time so it looks pretty ugly and gross right now and also I just slapped on the paint like two layers it's like a primer and paint in one and I had good experiences with that in the past but this is kind of peeling off the walls a bit more than I'm used to so I should have sanded and done everything properly, but I tend to do things backwards. <laughs> um, I want to speak more kindly of myself. I think I'm doing pretty good with that now. Um, and others, I mean, people make mistakes and sometimes it's easy to be critical, but the only time I'm like really critical of people is if they're extremely critical of others and judgmental. It's like, just let people live and take a look in the mirror when you're judging. And like someone used to say like, you know, I was just sharing things, what we could do to try to like reduce our risk of cancer and whatnot with all the things I've kind of said, like with people say everything gives you cancer nowadays. Well, there are things we could at least do to try to reduce our risk. And then someone made a comment like all the people I know who worry about getting cancer get cancer. It's like you're trying to say that in a funny snarky way. It's like, well, that's pretty damn sad. Like no one deserves that and nothing's wrong with um trying to be preventative towards our health so yeah just um doing better it doesn't mean nothing bad is ever going to come or happen but just um well it looks like my neighbor so that'd be kind of interesting <laughs> small world um last is life is short but I don't want it to be that short I want to live a long time um I used to not take very good care of myself and I probably have a shorter life expectancy being autistic having fibromyalgia which is actually I think is EDS I have to look into it sometime I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia but I have a lot of the EDS symptoms like more so than fibromyalgia and there is some overlap so that's something I want to learn more about because I think people with EDS possibly do have a lower life expectancy but if there's anything I can do in that regard and know just to know better about myself and to live a better life there's no harm in that so it would be nice to figure that out because fibromyalgia has always felt like a default diagnosis in my opinion like, oh, you don't have MS, you don't have lupus. I guess it's this. So. Yeah, that's something I'd like to do. And, um. 
I want to live a long life and there's still a lot I want to accomplish in this life and so if there's anything I can do to better myself now I mean it's never too late to make an effort like I can't think like oh well I've already poisoned myself or oh when I was a child I didn't have um, a choice in the matter and my body's just ruined so oh well but th no there are things that we can do to help because and I think I'm doing pretty damn good for the first time in my life in terms of all of it. So, yes, I'm pretty proud. Anyway, thank you so much for <laughs> listening to me ramble today. Today was more so on a whim. I did write some things down to keep my brain more organized. Because if I don't do that at all, then... This video would probably be three times as long. <laughs> but yes, thank you. And I always have a hard time saying goodbye. Please comment, like, subscribe. Please comment some of your um, wellness tips, mental health, physical, whatever it may be. Some things you like to do. Some things you like to make yourself. Like I've mentioned, soap, shampoos, and all that stuff. And please um, let me know. So yeah, have an awesome day.